Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Maria Pesson, who is the owner of Vibe Consulting. Maria, welcome to the program. Well, thank you for having me on your show. I'm excited to be here. You're welcome. Um, give us a little bit of uh, background on yourself. I know you come out of and work in the apparel industry. So what um, led you to start Vibe Consulting? And then what is the focus of your agency? Okay. Well, that's a big question. Thank you. Um, I've been in this industry for over 40 years. And I started as a very young person and grew through just being tenacious and working hard. I had no contacts when I came into the industry. In fact, I didn't know anyone who actually worked in an office. I come from a blue collar family. So it was very unique and different from my background. And I had to just go up the ladder in a slow but steady way. And I finally started um, running companies. You know, I built myself up to being president of um, several companies where I took an idea and made it into a business and made it into a multi-million dollar business where our profits were good and I always had the highest margins in the company. So I've enjoyed success in the industry. And about six years ago, I decided that I wanted to have my own business. And I wanted it to be working with startups and small businesses to help them establish their companies and grow their business to profitable and strong enough sales so that they felt really successful. Not a little bit of success, but a lot of success. There's a lot of risk in starting your own business. So if you're going to do it, you might as well have a very strong upside to it. And the reason I wanted to work with these kinds of companies is because they're still very passionate and very excited about the business. Um, in this business for the last 40 years that I've been in it, there's been a big evolution. What used to be an easy business and a very um, profitable, successful business to go into Nowadays, it's much tougher. I'm sure you've read about retail stores going bankrupt, Chapter 11, closing doors, manufacturers that used to be very hot and strong going out of business. The retail climate is not that easy now. So you have to be very strategic and very good at what you do in order to be successful. So the people I speak with are really jaded. They're really pessimistic. They're, all they say is the business is terrible and they're very down on it. And that's not fun to work with. Yeah. I want to work with people who are excited and who are into it and who bring passion to it. And I get to do that with the people that I work with. And it's kind of funny. Um, you know, I'm a salesperson from the beginning. That was really how I started in the business before. Well, actually, I started in business being clerical but I really started in the business as a salesperson. So my background is very strong in sales. And when I work with people, I always think that my product will be great for them. So when I had a leather line, I thought I was bringing something very strong to the table and that they could make money with it. Whatever stores bought it would make money and be successful. So I never felt like I was pushing anything down anyone's throat like just getting them to buy something just so that I can have an order. It was to me, if they were successful, then I was successful. So the same thing with my business. I don't sell my services. I help people use my services because I know that I make a difference in their companies. And I always feel that they're lucky to have found me. And whether that sounds egotistical or not, I mean it because I feel like I give 110% to my clients. I'm there for them to help them make sure that they have a place in the market, they have a reason to be, their product is strong, their production, their fit, their styling, all of that is correct. 
and we come up with strategies to get the message out. We make sure the website is strong. We make sure their margins are there. And we create sales. So we look at every part of the business to help people, and many of them are new. They don't even have a clue about what the business is about. <laughs> or they're designers, and they don't know the business end. So, you know, that's what I bring to the table. And, and a proven track record. So I think that that's a big piece for people to realize is you can say, yeah, I've got these great ideas, and they're proven by, and here's a case study, here's my experience. And, you know, you said something interesting there that made me think of um, kind of almost like a – I don't know, an industry trend or, a, or a, a piece of knowledge that people don't realize. Um, a, a friend of mine started his agency working with pro athletes, uh, helping them start businesses even while they're still athletes because in the uh, field of professional sports, you've got a name, you've got a following, but if you get injured or when you're done playing – poof, it could go all go away. So same with what you're mentioning here with fashion designers. Um, you've got great ideas. You've got great skills. But are you positioning it in the best possible way? And that's where you would come in. So what are you finding when people will come to you for the first time and ask you questions of can you help? What's the first thing that they're needing help with? And is that the most important thing they need help with? Are you answering the question and then saying, but look at this right here. You might not realize this is the angle you need to start with first to get the most momentum. Well, I think that um, there's several things that I look at when I first speak to a client. And one is how do they fit in the market? What do they bring to the table that's unique and different and not what everybody is doing? Because there's a lot of product out there. So you need to make sure that your product needs to exist. Why would someone buy you instead of someone else? You know, this market isn't expanding in any great way. So since it isn't growing, you have to really replace another vendor that they have. So why would they do that? If they already have their vendors and they're successful, what are you going to do that is more powerful that they'll buy you instead of someone else? So I always look at that with them. What's their reason to be? And part of what we do is we look at the competitive um, landscape. You know, who do they compete with? Why are they different? Why do you need to be instead of this manufacturer? So that's one of the very important things that we look at. And the other thing is we look at products because if the product isn't good, then no one's going to buy you. So you have to make sure that the product is right for the market. You have to identify your market. You know, you have to have your demographic and psychographic done so that you understand your market really completely. And then you have to make a product that's really, you know, fabulous. Yeah. It can't be mediocre. It has to be fabulous. Well, if you have your branding and marketing and target marketing all dialed in and have this spectacular campaign and it gets a tremendous amount of benef uh, 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 attention and sales, and then the product comes and they're like, meh, then you've just you just literally shot your entire investment and it's not going to do any good. On the other hand, when you just do that little bit extra, the product might be good now, but how can it be excellent? And so if I'm hearing you correctly, you're helping them on both sides of that equation, making sure the attention and the marketing and promotion is there, but as well as making sure that they're p properly positioning their product. Absolutely. I have a client that I've been working with for over a year now. And they were in business for four years, but they were struggling. Their sales were going down, not up. And they couldn't figure out what they needed to do. They had a team of sales reps, and they were all giving them different advice, and they were doing everything everyone said, and it was not working. And we spent the year evolving the line. We didn't make a revolution because they still had a business, so you can't, you know, throw out what was working. So you have to build on what is working and just make it more powerful. So we revamped the line so that it was so much better and the stores loved it. And already the line is reordering and doing um, much better sales. So that's exciting.
And yeah, and you, was, you mentioned you um, demographics and psychographics, and I think that that's a um, marketing term that people may not understand if you're in the fashion design or, the, or if you're an entrepreneur. Tell me a little bit about your approach, because I know what you mean, but I don't think that people realize the light bulb moment when you really dial in and speak to your correct target audience with the, the, you know, the right messaging that meets their, you know, the psychographics, like are they outdoorsy, are they more, you know, urban, and, and how does that work in what you're doing with your clients? Well, knowing who your customer is really, really clearly is so, so important. I mean, it just really makes a difference in how successful you are. So knowing demographics, by the way, um, means the specifics of your customer, their sex, their age, their income, their education, are they married, are they single, and psychographics um, pertain to lifestyle. How do they live? What do they believe? What magazines do they read? You know, those specific psychographics. So you really want to create a very clear picture of who that person is so that everything you do relates to them, how, what they buy, how do they wear it, where do they wear it, um, how, um, how do they think of um, things, how do they shop, like what's their style of shopping. You want to really know where they live and what's important to them. You can even go as far as creating an avatar, which is kind of like a fake person, like a made-up person. And I've done that for my clients. So let's say... Um, I want to, one of my clients does men's shoes. So who is that person? He's a man. The shoes are um, more dressed up, so he's a professional man. He probably makes, we decided, between seventy-five and $150,000 a year. He's married with two children. Um, both of them are um, in elementary school. His wife is a nurse. You know, we build it out. We name him. His name is, you know, John Smith. Good, yeah. And he lives in Iowa. You know, you can, when you created that specifically and you do everything and you focus all of your efforts on this one person, then you're so strong in that rather yeah, than a, be all over the place. As you were one describing that, I was thinking, um, I was wondering if you were going to say, and we named him because it's really an important piece. And, and I would even venture to say that you recommend that your clients have a just a stock photo picture of some actor person that would be that avatar so that you're really creating your line, your marketing, your messaging to that person right then and there. And that's really good. You know, I think that's a great idea about the picture. I never thought of that. Yeah, I've heard it before where people that um, do business by like doing webinars and, and presentations that they have that avatar dialed in really well like that. And then they have this picture of the avatar um, on top of their computer so that as they're speaking to the webcam, they're literally talking face to face per se to that person. Um, but yeah, you've got it really, I like really. That. I like the picture. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, you, that. yeah. That's a good one. So good. There's a there's a free tip for you. So so then Thank when you, you start. Wait, one other thing I want to, I just okay. want to add one other thing. Sure. Customer, uh, clients come to me and when I ask them who they sell, who's their customer, they say everyone. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. they say that a lot. And it's a, it might be true that you could sell to everyone. When I was doing Jessica Simpson coats, I used to spend a lot of time on the floor at stores just to see what the customer said and, and how they bought things and the buying patterns. And one day I sold a pea coat to a 13-year-old girl, and the next day I sold the same pea coat to a 63-year-old. Yeah. And the truth is that, yes, you can sell to everyone. You're not going to tell them they can't buy it, obviously. But you can't market and you can't design for everyone. You have to be specific in what you do so that you stand for something. Yeah. And Have you ever read that book, six- um, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller? No, and I read a lot. I never heard of that one. It's a really good one. So building a story brand, Donald Miller, in there, it's a wonderful book, but one of the things he says that goes right along with what you just laid out, which is, if you confuse, you lose, and you need to be very, very specific in who you're offering your product to and how your product helps them. I love that saying. 
That's yeah, great. so grab that book. Hey, so what are, you, what are you recommending to your clients once they come on board and you have a little plan laid out? I know that one of the first things is, yeah, all that other stuff is great, but I need sales. I need sales. What are you recommending to uh, strategy-wise to help them increase sales? Well, I look at how they sell. Are they totally retail, you know, B2C, or are they wholesale, or are they both? And I always recommend, if you can, to do both. It's a more accelerated way of building your business. When you sell to stores, they place orders that are much bigger than when you sell to customers because they just buy a couple of pieces where the stores buy an assortment. And then you get your name out there in a bigger way because more than one customer will see it. So you get big orders. However, the margins are smaller because you have to allow for the store to make a profit. Whereas B2C, you may sell less pieces, but you have much higher margins because there's no middleman. And the other advantage to online is that you create an environment that is totally um, your brand. So you look at the website and you get the feeling and the idea of who this company is. So I always recommend they do both. And um, the way to do both, obviously, is to have a good website and do all the marketing that goes with it. Social media is really important, running ads, Google ads, um, Instagram ads, all of that stuff will build your B2C sales. But then you also need to reach out to stores, and there's a few ways to do that. One is putting together um, your own showroom, which is expensive and not always feasible for people I work with. So the other solution is to hire independent sales reps who work on a commission base. And some of them ask for some money monthly to help mitigate costs, but mostly you pay them on what you ship and you give them commission. So you're dialed in to a place that already has a following of customers that they have relationships with. They have other lines that they sell to them, so there's already that in place. And you can get to the stores much quicker than when you don't know who they are. So that's another way to do it. But if you don't have all the background set up correctly, you won't get a good rep and you won't get sales. You have to make sure the the base is correct. And once that's correct, then you can go after sales. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, the other thing that I was thinking of, too, when we were mentioning branding, how does that play into your approach? Because, again, you can have a great product, um, but the branding really puts the sizzle onto the message. How do you uh, work with that with your clients? Well, branding is so important now. Uh, in the olden days, as they say, it wasn't so important. But nowadays, stores want to buy from people that, customers have heard of and know about and maybe in the very very beginning you don't have that knowledge but as you grow your brand then you'll have more opportunity with more stores so in order to get real traction there has to be that customer knowledge of your brand and there are people that there are stores that won't buy you if you don't have like a following of 40,000 people on Instagram. I mean, that's really serious. So the branding is strategic. And then also customers want to buy from people they have an emotional connection with, you know, think of Tom's shoes. When Tom's um, started their company and they still do this for every pair of shoes that they sold, they gave a free pair away to people who didn't have shoes, which is a great, marketing message is a great thing to do. I mean, it's really a nice thing to do, but it also engages your audience. My daughter, who was a teenager at the time, wanted to get these Tom shoes because she knew that they did this, and she thought, how wonderful that they do this. I want to support it. So that's one way to get an emotional connection. But um, you get an emotional connection through your styling, your imaging, your messaging, your um, other things that you do to create that connection. For example, um, let me give you an example of this, where you can create an emotional connection. Like there's a company out there called Great. They do sneakers and they do direct to customer and their imagery is so consistently the same 
we're obviously the product, you know, changes a bit, but the imagery is so consistent that when you see an ad from Great, you go, that's Great. You don't even need to see the name. It's like Target with the bullseye. You don't even need to see the name Target. Yeah. You know that it stands for that. So that kind of messaging and branding will bring you a lot of sales. And I want to point out, and I know you agree with this, but I want to clarify this, that branding a lot of times people think is your logo and your graphics, and that's only the tip of the iceberg. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's important too, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. It's the meaning that your brand carries. Ralph Lauren. What does Ralph Lauren stand for? Do you know? Um, I don't know. Um, I would assume uh, high-quality fashion. Okay. So if you're a, a shopper and you like to buy men's clothes, you might think Ralph Lauren is my brand. Like my nephew and my son who are in their 20s, they think Ralph Lauren has like the best clothes for men. So they love that brand. And they mainly buy polo because they know – what he stands for. They see his product. They don't even need to see the name. They know it's him. And that's what they aspire to dress like. So they've gotten this serious connection to him that they want to buy him because of the clothing and the image. You know, he's all American, preppy, you know, New England kind of feeling in his apparel. And they aspire to have that look. And that's interesting you, you said it that way because from a marketing perspective, people do aspire to something. And if your brand is set up the right way, you want them to aspire to what you offer and what you offer should give them status, prestige, achievement, recognition, and, and all of that. So I think that's a really, really great piece. Let's, uh, let's uh, wrap up with what's the best way that someone could reach out to you, maybe have an initial conversation and see what you offer, if that could benefit their business. That would be great. So my website is vibe, V as in Victor, I, B as in boy, E, consulting, dot C-O, not com, but C-O. So you can go to my website, which is actually being redone um, this couple of weeks and will be new soon. And um, if you want to have a free consultation with me, you can go to my email and ask for it. And my email address is Maria, M-A-R-I-A, at vibe consulting dot Excellent. Well, Maria, thank you so much for coming on today. It was really great talking with you. And it was great to be on here. You ask good questions. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.